What's up, good movie lovers, and welcome to a movie review for Sucker Punch. As always, if you haven't seen the movie yet, this is going to be a spoiler-filled review. So please be aware that if you listen from beyond this point, there will be secrets of the movie revealed. But well, first, I don't know about that. <laughs> was well, first, okay, let's just start out with our rating. Tuesday afternoon, only if you have some weed and a high-def TV. <laughs> that's about the extent of it. That's, that's all I can recommend for this. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, don't bother. Just and good weed, too. <laughs> not like <laughs> the hydro. You need some hydro to get hydro through this. Hydro in a lab. Right. Uh, mad scientist right. created. Right. Pur- you know, purple. You know, some, some Minnesota. <laughs> okay, okay. Wow. We have lots to talk about. I'll also go <laughs> unworthy of big screen viewing. Again, it's, yeah, it's, it's it that is. weird part with movies these days where a lot of times the only reason to see these is because of the eye candy, exactly. because of the big screen experience. Exactly. But it's, if it's a really bad movie, I can't pony up eleven dollars for it. Yeah. So, what, but thankfully, a lot you know, if you have a friend with a good big screen TV, right, right. it's kind of a similar, you're a good high def, you know, with a Blu-ray player. Yeah. This would be a good Blu-ray, I guess. All right, so I'm I'm gonna go rental. Yeah, just just rental. Right, it's, it's a very disappointing rental. Yeah. So, okay, Jonas. So, what's the story of Sucker Punch? Okay. Well, mom dies. Dad doesn't get the inheritance. Kills girl. Commits the other girl to insane asylum to cover his tracks. The girl is gonna get lobotomized because he, he paid off. Guy. He pays off the evil insane asylum guy, the insane asylum chief, orderly chief. Yeah, right. Yeah. Doctor. Exactly. Doctor. We're not sure exactly how he runs the place. Yeah. He's not a doctor. But yeah. regardless, it shifts into an alternate fantasy world where the insane time is actually a cat house and all the patients are dancers slash prostitutes. She's going to dance to save. She wants to escape and she finds out that the way to escape is to get these five items that are within the cat house slash insane asylum. And the only way to get them is is to dance in front of the people who have them so she can put them in a trance. Right, and then you know, she's such an amazing dancer, and then when she goes into her dance, she's actually transporting second alternate reality, right. or a third world, which is the crazy video game reality, yeah. which is where, uh, hopefully, the enjoyment comes from. Okay. And not so much. I know, we were both looking forward to this movie. I, ever since I saw the preview, I was just, I, I could not wait. Same I was here. shaking with anticipation. Holy just, just looks awesome. It looked like just the comic book nerd's wet dream come true. It yeah. was just everything you could possibly want. And then the reviews started to come in, and I couldn't imagine how can this... You've got prostitutes slash strippers in schoolgirl outfits with katanas and guns. You've got robot warriors. You've got... Nazi zombies. Not just, no, not Nazi. just zombie Nazis. Steampunk <laughs> zombie Nazis. Right. You know, you've got the futuristic train with the bomb and the robots and then uh, the, the orcs and the dragon and the castle and Scott Glenn. And it's like, how can this possibly fail? Yes. And it, it did. It, did. it says it was boring. Yeah. How can you have all Hot, that exactly. and have it be boring? It, we got sucker punched. Yeah, we got I mean, sucker punched. Literally. Right, we like, like yeah. come on, Zach. Yeah. And that's kind of the thing I came to from this was that as watching it, I'm sitting there like, you have all this stuff going on and these amazing visuals. Zack Snyder is great at images. Right. He makes great looking movies. He's a horrible action director. And content. And cool, and content, yeah, you if can't. Because this and he, was and his plot, the first one that he wrote, he wrote on Yeah, exactly. So the other movies he's made have been all adaptations. Right. 300, well, except for enough a, of a story. Yeah, and then Watchmen was, he was dealing with, you know, a... Some source material that if you know people that are into it, just there's no crutch here for him. right. And he reveals he does not know how to tell an engaging yeah. emotional Story. character-based story. Exactly. But that's the thing is that I wouldn't. I don't need. A, I wasn't expecting an emotional en- engaging character-based story. Right. I was expecting a crazy comic book phantasmagoria video game thing come to life. Okay. And like I went in with those expectations. Right. And it even failed there. And the thing I got from it is I was talking to, to our friend Shane about this. It was. Where I think it was trying to go for the feel of you know being in a video game, right. and what I felt like I was watching somebody play a video game. Ah, and it was that kind of just detachment where you just like, yeah, that's oh that's pretty, that's oh that's good, oh wow, it's good graphics there. Yeah, like that's kind of cool. Like, and it was very much a video. I mean, every level there, there were levels, and Here's there's the a little level. cut scene with Scott Glenn to start you off with, and yeah. then you know you've got to get the crystals from the dragon, and there's checkpoints and. Uh, here are the five items we need. <laughs> yeah. Scott you know, Glenn doing his uh, David Carradine impersonation. Right, exactly. The opening fight scene with the giant stone samurais, I mean, it basically looked like I was watching a really expensive version of, like, 
you know, Soul Calibur okay. or something, <laughs> yeah, that's you know, yeah, or like sure. Tech, like one of those, you yeah. know, that's what it looked like I was watching. As gorgeous as it was to look at, it was all cliche. Like it was all nothing I'd ever seen before, but I'd seen it all before. Yeah. It was all, the images were great, but the actual, like every action move right. was something I've seen before. When you're in an action movie, you know, you get that, that move like, you're like, oh, oh my yeah, God, oh! Sure. There was I can't none believe of that. they did that. Yeah, I can't believe, there was none of that. It was none of that. I think it does lead though to the lack of development, even minimal development for this pale porcelain doll main character. Because the first one, when she jumps into the fantastic reality right. is that samurai and it's like all of a sudden she knows how to use the weapons there is no doubt in your mind that she's going to defeat these guys those guys have no personalities there's no overarching evil kind of sense of bad guy controlling everyone essentially there's like no drama in this movie there's never any kind of feeling of okay they're not they're gonna get through this level which okay. is an odd thing to say when you've got someone that like is getting lobotomized right. and exactly <laughs> you know is it's trapped in an insane asylum yeah. and there's just three layers of reality right our lives are in peril young girls are getting killed there's horrible evil villains but yeah there's no drama <laughs> yeah. so you never feel any anything sort, yeah. for anybody and i was saying this like at about the midway point a couple walked out in the middle right. of the theater, and it was just the moment where I was thinking, yeah, if I hadn't committed to review this, this is the point of the movie where, like, okay, I've seen everything that this is going to be. I know it's not going to be any more than this. Right. I'm not impressed. After, I think, the second mission, right, when right. She, she succeeds, I started leaning on my elbow, and I was just like, okay, there's two more missions to go. Right. They go back to the cat house, and they're going to talk, 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 and they're going to go back into the fantasy, and then she's going to go through it no problem. And it was just like so boring to think about, I have to sit through this. Mine started to drift during the steampunk zombie Nazi fight okay. scene. Like yeah. I just kind of like lost track of things. And like, there's insanity going on. Yeah. There's giant biplanes and the mecha robots and just this, that, <laughs> and the other things. and everything. And yeah. Like, yeah, I'm just like, okay, whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. It's boring. Exactly. And it just goes to show you, spectacle is not enough. 100%. It's not enough. You can have just a crazy action movie, but it's got the action, you have to direct that action well, where that's engaging. Right. If you're gonna do a movie which is basically just a video game come to life, if, if that's gonna be your thing, and let's do that. First of all, how do you not have an end boss fight scene? There was no big boss yes. scene. There was yes. no big boss fight scene, come no, on. Yeah. Like, no boss stage, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, um, well, there was the, the high dragon. roller was going to come in. The high roller was going to come in. But that wasn't for the fantasy, like the super fantastic realm. Right. It was, more, it was for yeah. that middle realm. But it was like. And okay. then the real realm. Yeah, and then yeah. the real realm, which the real realm we see at the beginning and we don't see until the end. Right. And I think that was one of the, in terms of like a story kind of structure for the screenplay, you're left wondering, okay, when are we going to go back there and how does it impact everything? There's a brief moment when she's describing the five items right. where they cut to the real world versions of those. But it don't makes get confused. no sense because we don't know anything about her character. The opening is basically like his version of David Fincher's Janie Got a Gun. That's, I was just saying exactly. Janie's Got a Gun. That's yeah. exactly it's what I thought. Totally it's the music video. It's the <laughs> Janie's Got a Gun music video. That's exactly it's what like it was. Janie's dad wants the money. You know, yeah. it's just like... The most... And again, I have no problem if you want to economically and without backstory and without just get right into it. And so yeah. here's the sticks. Here's what happened. Boom. Mom dead. Guy wants, visual, he wants the money. Was good. It was right. all visual. Except for the fact that he's just not a good... I thought, I'm like, okay, obviously he's got a background in music videos. Yeah. He doesn't, though. A lot of what plagued this, we should talk about, I think, is the music choices. Which, yeah. this is the same thing that came from Watchmen, where the exactly. music almost ruined the movie it's for like me in Watchmen. It's like, the music first, and he's like, this will be a great song to go with some visuals. Right. So I'm going to create visuals around it. Instead of starting with character and letting that create the action, and then letting the music enhance the character. But then the music he chooses is like, all these bad cover versions. Yeah. Like, why not, like, I want the original uh, Search and Destroy, the Stooges version. I don't want that, clean, whatever the... Power, power pop version sweet we got. Sweet dreams are If you're gonna do that, give me the Marilyn Manson sweet <laughs> yeah. dreams. Yeah. Give me, but then randomly, it's the real Bjork song. Yeah. That's the only one that wasn't covered. Yeah. It's, the, it's the real Army of Me, and then... And then I think some of them, like, the actresses were singing some of the song. Basically, he makes, like, four or five music videos and strings and them strings together And puts them in a movie. Yes, exactly. That's exactly what he does. I mean, it does look great. I really enjoyed it, the fight scene with the dragon. Like, there's this one angle where she jumps from the fire... And then it goes on the sword and like it swoops up above her and she goes down. It looks great. It looked like I was watching a cutscene from Final Fantasy. Okay. That's what it looked like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. 
And I've been trying just to nail down, how did this not work? And it's almost like he heard of Inception or saw Inception. He's <laughs> like the little kid trying to put daddy's shoes on. And it's interesting you say that because my take on Snyder is that it's, I think it's not enough to say that he makes movies for teenagers. He makes movies like it, for 11 year olds. <laughs> if I was 11, I would have yeah. loved this movie. I would have too. Because it's got like the cute, uh, hot girls, but there's no actual sex or sexiness really. Yeah. We don't even see that the crazy strip scenes are just alluded to. And you know, how, it's like, is, did it bother you that we never see her dance? Like we don't yeah, see this, I, like this, everyone's blown away wait, by it. Right. But all she does is just like this weird shoulder rock And something. then boom, we're right into the... Video game world. I've been trying to re read up on like what motivated him to do this. He's like, I want to just create a story where it'll make sense for this fantasy world to come in. Right. And it does have that Inception y kind of like multi level, but Inception's great about here's how it works. Right. And it goes from her about to be lobotomized to her now fantasizing that the mental hospital is a whorehouse. Right. Except for that actually took place before she was going to be lobotomized. Yeah. So, so maybe she's flashing back to yeah. the fantasy. So, but it doesn't matter. I don't care. Is the yeah. thing. Like, don't but it, but it's like, it. when I first saw this preview, I'm like, oh my God, great. It's yeah. going to be good. If it's character-based, the fantasies come out of her psyche. So what is it about her that would want to imagine this place as a whorehouse? What is it about something within her why does she want to play that character? Because Snyder's like, this is going to be a female empowerment. But it's, it's a female exploitation. It's right, like, it's completely female exploitation. I, we kind of briefly talked, you know, when we first had each other, like, what did you think? I kind of said, well, it didn't disappoint based on the preview. Like, if you're 11 or 13 in high school, and you see this, and it's like, okay, all these girls are going to be dressed really slutty. Right. And there's going to be machine guns and explosions and, and fantasy. And steampunk all, zombie Nazis. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, it, it it delivered on that. All the elements were there. Yeah. But it didn't. It wasn't entertaining though. It right. was all these these great genre mashup comic book dream right. things, and there's, it didn't happen. Like, yeah. And the thing is, is that in this kind of movie, I don't need a lot of character. I don't need a lot of backstory. But do something interesting. I'll argue and, that everything comes from. Like, I know we don't need to make this like a pianist or turn right, 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 like right, the yeah. super Oscar winning. But, like, if, if you don't even have that laid down... But how do you... Here's my thing. How do you have a super team of five hot chicks yeah. and not have them all have individual abilities? Right. You know, one's Nunchucks, one's Donatello, one's Raphael, <laughs> one's... You know, Fox Force you've got 5. Fox Force 5. You've got the Knife Girl and you've got the Explosive Experts. Yeah. And, or, you know, Captain EO. You've got Heart and Wind and Fire. It's like, you have to... Have, these are classic comic book video game archetypes. Right. And if you're going to have a super team like that, you each girl should have their thing. Yeah. And the girls were all generic. They all melded together. Like, you could have given each girl their one board where they yeah. get... For some reason, the Asian girl was always the one driving. She was always the pilot for whatever reason. Yeah, and it, that was never explained. And it seemed like the way you would go about doing that is when she first arrives at the hospital in reality... You meet them all. And right, you kind of yeah. get a sense of, okay, well, what's their deal and what's their personalities? Then when you go into the slutty realm, then, okay, something about that has carried over. Right. And then when you go to the final oh. fantasy world, now it's a manifestation of that. It almost seemed like in the fantasy realm, they all, of her imagination, because when she went back to the, after dancing, they didn't all know what happened in her crazy dream right so in the dream i guess not i don't care <laughs> but see, that's a pretty, like, we're so defeated from this we're like oh you know i don't want to put even the effort into being right because like, there's nothing to gain from it there's nothing yeah. to glean like if we're going to even just talk about plot points you say it is I, this is how i'm anal like this like why if you're the bad guy why do you shoot the girl that ratted the other girls out <laughs> yeah. in front of the other that's not smart that's right. not good politics you want to encourage the girls to rat each other out exactly that's how you maintain power like if i'm running a, a whorehouse with a with an iron fist like that's what i would do you reward her you right make, you, you get for the show you get for the right or whatever exactly yeah. yeah so you don't kill her in front of everybody you that's put just fear in her no that's stupid you kill the asian girl you, you kill the innocent bystander right we didn't really do anything that's that's how, yeah, if you're running a whorehouse with a murderous hand, that's how you do it. Because then it's random and you, and you don't know. <laughs> right. Any, anyone could be next. That's how you put Which the fear of God in people. A little, I think we have a little book here written by coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Available at smashwords.com. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> how to run a whorehouse with, with a an murderous iron hand. Fist. With an iron fist and a murderous hand. <laughs> It seems like almost all these character motivations and lines are just... Snyder is like, okay, this would be something cool to say. This would be something cool to do. It, it has no connection to anything that the characters do <laughs> right, at any point right, in the movie. There's right, no carryover right. for anything in this. Yeah. It's just like one second, the uh, madam of the house, she doesn't care about the girls. The next minute, she cares about the girls. Right. 
and it, it's just all over the place. Again, I could forgive all of that if it was entertaining. Yeah. I, on the on a visceral action level, yeah. if it was entertaining in that sense.